Before this video begins, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. Also, be sure to check out my affiliate links down below so you can get discounts on different car mods and products. All right, let's get into the review. Hello and welcome. Today we are reviewing a 2020 Ford Escape. This is an SE model. This is finished in black with a black cloth interior. I would like to thank Flood Ford Lincoln of Narragansett, Rhode Island for allowing me to review this SUV. I'm also going to be taking this for a test drive, so make sure to check that video out coming out soon on the channel. So this is a small SUV competing with the Honda CRV, Toyota RAV4, and the Nissan Rogue along with similar vehicles. So this is a two row SUV with uh, seating for five. This comes in with a gross weight of roughly 4,000 pounds. This is a front wheel drive model with an engine of 1.5 liters with a turbocharger, and that's actually a three cylinder engine. So this produces 181 horsepower. This achieves 27 in the city and 33 MPG highway. This rides on some 17 inch wheels and these are just going to be typical alloy wheels and they do have 225 tires all around. This Ford Escape does have active park assist and it does have blind spot monitoring along with auto high beams. So for this 2020 redesign of the Escape, it is 180 inches long, 180.5 to be exact, and that is larger than the Bronco Sport. So they're not quite direct competitors in the Ford lineup. This does come with uh, halogen lights up in the front and in the rear. And it does come with a pretty standard across the Ford Escape line now, a gloss black grille. Unless you go to the absolute top trim, which does have some chrome, they all do look like this. You do get a dual chrome tip exhaust in the rear, and you also get heated mirrors on the side. This particular spec does not have a sunroof. Also below the exhaust, this does have uh, the kick rear lift gate. So if you're with your key close to the Ford, then you can actually uh, have it open up if you swing your foot under the sensor or lightly tap it. This has 37 cubic feet of rear storage in the cargo area with the seats up and 65 with the rear seats down. Although this is a bit smaller than class competitors. It does come with a temporary spare tire. And let's hop outside and check it out. Alright, so in the front, I think it looks a lot better than uh, the previous gen. It definitely, uh, it looks a lot more sleek. It looks kind of close to like those Lincolns in the back. It has a lot sleeker, smoother body lines. And I think it looks pretty good. Unfortunately, no fog lights in this lower trim though. S, S, E, S, E, L, and then titanium are going to be the trim. So this is a mid-lower trim. For the side profile, you do get like in a lot of Fords and Lincolns, you get your uh, keypad. So that's a nice feature they've kept, and it does have uh, uh, some easy entry right there with sensors. It does have an easy open fuel door and easy fuel cap. In the rear, it does have your all-wheel drive badge, so that is good. And uh, that's about it for the back. It looks pretty, uh, pretty good. It looks chiseled and uh, not overly smooth in any of this. It does have some nice body lines going throughout. And here you do have a plastic trim piece. And uh, it's a pretty basic outside. I think it looks pretty good though, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, I think it looks well updated and well modernized. All right, let's hop in the front. So for your door panel in here, it is pretty basic. It does have some soft touch materials with some uh, geometric shapes through here. So that looks okay in my opinion. It's better than having just hard plastic. It's not hard plastic, which is good. You do have some padded cloth here, some rubberized stuff, and then uh, down below it is all hard touch, but that's all right. Then to the left of your driver's wheel, you do get your light controls, and that's about it. For your steering wheel, this is a lower trim, so you actually don't get a leather-wrapped wheel. This is going to be a rubberized wheel. You also don't get uh, rear shift paddles, but those are both all right. It doesn't feel too bad in hand, has some nice bolstering, and it doesn't look too overly cheap. And uh, it's a pretty basic wheel, of course, but it has a co couple touches of chrome and uh, pretty simple to use buttons. I like the layout of this. For your gauge cluster, it is going to have a digital multimedia screen in the center, but it will generally be uh, analog for all of your gauges. 
In your center, it is going to be SYNC 3, Ford's common system. I like SYNC 3 personally, that's just my thoughts, but I think it's very simple, intuitive, and easy to use. For your fit and finish, it is rubberized up here, so at least it's not hard uh, touch, just like, you know, junky metal or something. It, it feels more premium up here. It has a nice uh, swooping thing of some chrome. It does have some piano black, which I personally choose to avoid. I don't really like piano black just because it picks up all the dust and everything, but it, it's subtly used here. I think it looks okay. And it's a pretty simple uh, setup down here. You do get hard uh, scroll wheel and a hard volume button, which is nice for your infotainment system. And then you actually get single zone automatic climate control down here. Down below that, you do get a pretty big storage cubby. Uh, no wireless charging pad though, that may come in a higher trim. Here's a USB type A port and a 12 volt charging port. Here you have a nice uh, little brushed uh, type of plastic. I think it looks a lot better than if they left it plain. It gives it definitely some style points right here. And for your shifter, they actually chose to do a rotary shifter to save space. So if you pop into reverse, that's a pretty low quality camera in my opinion, but that's not a Ford thing. That's just a lot of brands just really, really don't focus on their uh, rear cameras. A Lincoln would of course be better. You get an electronic parking brake. You get a uh, auto hold feature right there and an auto stop start right here. And then additionally, you get a couple of drive modes. So in here you have normal, eco, sport, slippery and deep snow or sand so that's a pretty good array then here you have a small but it's padded uh little center console area and you get another usb type a inside of there you also do get a uh, pretty large uh, glove box over there and although you do have cloth seating in here it has some nice geometry to it they really don't feel all that bad they're pretty sportive and they're also power seats for the driver with two-way lumbar support but for the passenger, unfortunately, it does retain full manual controls. Yeah, so uh, up here, it's relatively simple. It's not trying to be anything more than it needs to be. But uh, I think it, it looks okay. It, it looks better than the prior generation. I both reviewed and drove a 2019, the last year of the previous gen, uh, Ford Escape on my channel. So make sure to go check that out to compare any of the changes. But I think it looks a lot better. And let's check out the rear seat room. Alrighty, so sitting here in the rear seat, I'm about six feet tall with pretty long legs and I have good room back here. They cut out a lot of room for the uh, the seats, which is good because they knew this is a bit of a smaller SUV. And surprisingly, these are actually reclining seats back here for the rear. So they actually can give you a decent bit of comfort. They're really hard though in the back of the seat, seat back. They just feel like you're against a plank. I really do not like that, but that's totally subjective. That's just me. And uh, similar to the front, has a, a version of the door finish. Unfortunately, it's not soft touch back here, though. It's all hard plastic. So I wish that were a little nicer, but that's okay. You do have uh, some climate vents, which is appreciated in a lower trim vehicle. A lot of the time, they cut those out. And then down here, you get a 12-volt charging port and a USB port as well. You have a nice little center pull-down. It's very basic, but it gets the job done. It has a couple of cup holders. And for headroom back here, it's massive. And also uh, the window visibility, it's pretty good back here. Pretty high window sills. I mean, excuse me, pretty low window sills, but they uh, continue up towards the roof line for a while. So it's not claustrophobic by any means back here. And let's check out the trunk. So if you hit this little sensor there, you could open it, but that's if I had the key in my pocket, which I do not. So here you just open like so. It is not a powered lift gate, so you do have to uh, opt to a higher option to get that. But it comes with a nice escape mat and a very minimal wheel well intrusion, which is awesome, as well as even some cutouts for storage, 12 volt and uh, some lights, LED lights by the look of them. And down below here, you do get a temporary spare. So that's a pretty good spare. All right, let's close that up and go hop back in. All right, so for this Ford Escape, this is only an SE trim, so uh, second from the lowest trim, but I think it gives you enough. It's uh, it's not bad in here. It's definitely well updated from the previous gen. And uh, yeah, we'll go see how it drives in uh, just another video. So make sure to check that out when it comes out soon on the channel. I would like to thank once again, Flood Ford Lincoln in Narragansett, Rhode Island, for allowing me to both review and drive this vehicle. Their link will be down below. Thank you very much for watching and take care.